Ani yaftafu qali. As you must be remembering, we completed our study of the 16 rukus or sections of Surah Al Imran. Today we are beginning with the 17th. But just to remind you that this surah, which is the sister surah, Surah Al Baqarah, these two surahs are very close to each other, very similar to each other, they resemble each other. They may be called sisters. They may be called Zawjain. Now this surah is also divisible just like Surah Al-Baqarah as I told you into two parts nearly equal. The total number of ayat is 200. In the first part there are 101 ayat and 10 sections. In the second part there are 99 ayat but the same 10 sections. 20 sections divided into two parts but the number of the ayat in the first is 101 and number of ayat in the second is 99. Now just like Surah Al-Baqarah, the first part is again divisible into three portions, nearly equal. One third of that is a general appeal to the Muslims, addressed to the Muslims, as well as the, the, the uh, mushrikeen, the idol worshippers of Arabia, as well as to the people of the book. It's a common appeal basic da'wah of Qur'an, basic call of Qur'an, and there are, you know, gems of Qur'anic wisdom, which we have already, you know, studied. I can't give more time to this repetition. Then the second part, again just about one-third of the first part, this part is addressing, you know, to the other group of the people of the book. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Ten sections were devoted to the address to Bani Israel. Ya Bani Israel, askuru imati yallati yanamtu alaykum wa'afu bi'ahdi, ufi bi'ahdikum wa yaya farhabun. Beginning of the fifth section. And this address to the Bani Israel, the former Muslim Ummah, continues for full ten sections, rather more. Because it is there in the fifteenth section that this goes to end. Ya Bani Israel, askuru imati yallati yanamtu alaykum wa'anni faddaltukum ala al-alami. So here we find that the other group from the people of the book, that is the Christians, the Nasara, they are being addressed. And here the question which have been discussed is the personality of Jesus, alayhi salatu was salam. He was really born without a father. He was Isa ibn Maryam, Jesus, son of Mary. He had no man father. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created him by his word of kun. That is why Quran says, kalimatum minho. He is a, a kalima, a word from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah creates Everything with this one command of kun. So actually, to say that he is son of God, that is, you know, shirk. And, you know, a biggest crime in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this description has been given, you know. And then there is, you know, example in the, in the person of John the Baptist. He was also born of very old parents. The father, Azad Zakriya alayhi salatu was salam, he was very old. And the mother, she had been barren all the, all the life. And she never born any, any child. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because Zakriya prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that please give me, give me also a son like this, this girl, this Maryam, you know, salamun alayha. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him and to, uh, this, this old, you know, father and mother, they, they gave birth to, a son and he is John the Baptist. So actually this all discussion is to rectify their belief about this trinity that Jesus belongs to in some way to deity. He is a part of deity. Either he is Allah himself that is God incarnate. You will find it in Surah Al-Nisa. You know, and then either or he is one of the three that is the trinity. So this main discussion is addressing the Christians. Then you know there was one third of the first half that is devoted primarily to the people of the book, both of them, the Yahud as well as the Sarah. And Hazrat Ibrahim had been mentioned, just he was mentioned there in the third part of the first half of Surah Al-Baqarah. You know Kaaba has been mentioned here. In awwala baytin wudiya linnasil al-lazi bi bakkata mubarakam wa hudal lil alameen. The, the construction of Kaaba was referred to in the third part of the first half of Surah Al-Baqarah also. 
So these are the three subsections of the first part of Surah Al-Ala Imran. Then the second part, which addresses directly and mainly the Muslim Ummah, the Muslims, the Sahaba. But you know, among the Muslims, there were Munafiqeen also now. So there were the true believers, Mu'mineen as Sadiqeen, but there were Munafiqeen also, there were the hypocrites. So that is addressed to the Muslims, and Muslims comprise of both. The Mu'min, the true Mu'mins, and the Munafiqeen. So this part actually is devoted to an address to the Muslim Ummah. But here again we can have three subsections. In the first twenty ayat or so, you know, main da'wah of Qur'an. And secondly, the, what's the function of the Muslim Ummah? Why has this Ummah been raised? Just as we had in Surah Al-Baqarah. وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاء عَلَى النَّاسِ وَيَكُونَ الرَّسُولُ عَلَيْكُمْ شَهِيدًا We have made you an Ummah, at the middle Ummah, the best Ummah. Why? Only that, so that our Messenger, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, becomes witness over you, and you become witness over the whole of the mankind. So that was the basic uh, goal for which, a uh, basic purpose for which this Ummah has been created and founded. Same way we found, you know, in that, that part, you know, in the first twenty ayat, we have two ayat. Kuntum khaira ummati nukhrajat lil nas ta'amuruna bil ma'aruf wa tanhawna lil mulkar wa tu'minuna billah. You are the best ummah. And you have been raised for the humanity at large. Other nations, they live for themselves. You have to live for the humanity at large. For their good. For their welfare. So that you call them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You call them to the right path. You forbid them from whatever is wrong and unjust and you bid them whatever is just and right. So that is the main function for which you have been formed in Ummah. وَكَذَلِكَ كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ نُخْرَجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ تَعْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفَ وَتَنْحَوْنَ لِلْمُنْكَرِ وَتُمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ And if the whole Ummah doesn't do this job, what to do? You create an Ummah within Ummah. Those of the Muslims who wake up from their slumber and sleep and who have the understanding of their duty as Muslims, then they should join hands and become a smaller ummah. As you say, party within party. A state within state. So an ummah within ummah. The greater ummah is the whole Muslim people who believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They are the greater Muslim ummah. Whosoever believes in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Quran and Tawheed, they, they belong, whether they are practicing Muslims or not. But they are part and parcel of the ummah. But you know this ummah, if it is not discharging the duties for which it was being raised, then some people have to take upon themselves the responsibility of discharging that duty. Otherwise the whole Ummah will be doomed. The whole Ummah will be punished. Just as the former Muslim Ummah has been punished, you know, so many times in history. So actually for that, وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَعْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَيَعْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَلْحَوْنَ عَلَى الْمُنْكَرِ وَأُولَائِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Out of you there should be one Ummah. And that Ummah, وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ they, will, they should do three jobs. Number one, calling people to whatever is good. And the biggest good on the surface of the earth is the word of Allah, this Qur'an. هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ This is much pressure and much better than all the things that you amass and you gather in this world. So this, to call in the people towards Qur'an, this is the first function of this party within party. The smaller ummah within the greater ummah of the Muslims, they should take upon themselves number one, yadun al khair, dawa al khair, calling the people to whatever is the most precious thing, and the most precious thing is this Quran. Number two, ya amruna bil maruf, you command and you know bid the humanity, and then first of all they should, you have to command it to the Muslims, the greater Muslim ummah, this smaller Muslim ummah, which must first of all reform the greater Muslim ummah. So that Yamuruna bil Maruf, this Amr bil Maruf will be first of all to the Muslims themselves. You believe in such and such things and look to your practices what you are doing. You are saying what you are not practicing. Lima taqulu na mala tafalun. Kabura maqtan in the lahi and taqulu mala tafalun. You shouldn't do it. This is haram. This is not permissible according to the Sharia. You leave it. And you know, then the Yamuruna bil Maruf, Yalhauna bil Murka. And to forbid them from whatever is unjust, whatever is Munkar, whatever is wrong, whatever is haram. This is the most important. Only such people will gain the success. They will be successful in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not the greater Muslim Ummah. The greater Muslim Ummah, 
will remain a Muslim here in this world. They will be accepted and acknowledged as Muslims, as legal Muslims. But you know the, the salvation of the hereafter, that will be given only to those people who are discharging those duties, which primarily was for, for, for the whole of the Ummah, but because the whole of the Ummah is not discharging, they have taken upon themselves that duty. They are devoting their lives, their belongings, their money, their resources, their, uh, you know, um, intelligence, everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed, bestowed upon them for the sake of Amr bin Ma'roof, Rahim al-Munkar, and Dawa ila al-Khair. Whosoever is doing so, only ulaika humul muflihul, falah, the success of the hereafter, that will only be given to these people who do this job and who take upon themselves. So these 20 ayah, two sections, the 11th and the 12th, they are very, most, very important. Then for 60 ayah, six sections that, that we have, you know, out of those we have uh, already uh, read the four ones. But uh, two will, we shall inshallah you know, translate today. These 60 ayat or six sections, they discuss the battle of Uhud, what happened during that battle. Different incidents that, that occurred and that took place. The mistake that the Muslims committed, the, 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 the act of indiscipline. Uh, Fifty archers who were placed at one place, you know. You have not to move from here. Come what may, you, you have to stay here. But you know, because after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the victory, they, they just left that place, 35 of them. The local commander insisted, don't move. But still they moved. So this was an, an act of indiscipline. Although they might have, you know, rationalized their action, that the Prophet had said to us that if we are all killed and you see that our corpses and our, you know, dead bodies, they are being eaten by the birds, even then you don't, don't, don't move from here. But here the condition was not of defeat, but you know, the victory has come to the Muslims. So we can give some allowance to the Sahaba Kiram who committed that mistake, that they were not disobeying Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because they had, you know, a rationalization that the instructions of the Prophet were in the case of the defeat. But here, this is not the defeat, it's the victory. But still it was, you know, an, an indiscipline uh, and disobedience of the local commander. And the, the rule of the discipline is, as I told you, the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, Man atani faqad ata Allah, wa man asani faqad asa Allah, wa man ata amiri faqad ata ani. وَمَنْ عَصَى أَمِيرِي فَقَدْ عَصَانِي Whosoever obeys me, he obeys Allah. And whosoever disobeys me, he disobeys actually Allah, not me. I am his apostle. I am his messenger. I, am, I have been appointed by him. So my command is actually command from Allah. But in the same way, whosoever obeys the commander that I have put, the Amir, whom I have nominated, I have given the responsibility, he is actually obeying me, not that Amir. He has the authority only that because I have appointed him there. So they are obeying me, not the Amir. And if they do disobey the Amir, appointed by me, then they are disobeying me. So indirectly it was a disobedience to the Prophet also. But you know, that turned the whole thing. The victory was turned into defeat temporarily. The Prophet himself was injured badly. Profuse bleeding was there from the you know, face of the Prophet the whole face became red, and he, for some time, due to the loss of blood, you know, he, he became unconscious also. And there were the rumors that he has been killed, he has been martyred. So this, that was the panic and chaos, but then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pardoned them. And again, finally, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala somehow put in the, in the minds of the, the kuffar. Abu Sufyan was leading that army of the kuffar. Somehow it came to him that we should not now press because the, the Muslims have taken refuge high up in the mountain, and if we pursue them, and, and they chase them even in the mountain, because they are at the higher position, they can only kill us by you know, throwing the stones even. Anyhow, they just left. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, now he discussed, and we have read that. But you know, the incident that happened in the very beginning was, that the Prophet came out of Medina with 1,000 men. But after reaching, you know, the footholds of, of the Uhud mountain, then you know when the army was visible, the, the, the army of the Kuffar that was visible, then Abdullah ibn Ubay, the chief of the Munafiqeen, he returned back with 300 of his men. 
So now the number reduced to 700 and they were pushed against an army of 3,000. So now the ratio was nearly, uh, approximately 1 to 4. But you know, these people, they said, because you know our advice and our opinion was not followed, and uh, the opinion of Abdullah ibn Abay was that we shouldn't go in the open field to confront the army of Quraysh. We should defend the city of Medina from within the walls. And incidentally, the same was the opinion of the Prophet himself, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he saw that the Muslims, you know, they, they are very emotional and they want to go out and, you know, to, to confront the kuffar. And when they said, many of them, that we want shahada, not victory. Victory is in the head of Allah. Actually, what we are after is martyrdom, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He accepts ourselves and our lives for the cause of Allah, for the cause of His deen. So then the Prophet decided, okay, we shall go and confront the people, the army uh, of Kuffar in the open. So now Abdullah ibn Ubayy, he said, because our opinions are not respected, so we, we are not going to risk our lives. And he and 300 of the people that were his associates, so to say the Munafiqeen, they, they returned. So now we have, as I told you, we have already translated four sections. Now two sections remain of this discussion. Then in the next two sections, again we shall have, you know, a division into two. In the first year, in, uh, that is the 19th section, there is a mention of again the Yahud and Munafiqeen and the Kuffar of Arab, the, the idol worshippers of Arabia. And then in the final, you know, there will be a summing up of the whole discussion of Surah uh, Al Imran. And again, we shall find there, you know, the, the most important gems of wisdom, Quranic wisdom. How Iman is synthesized. What is the synthesis of Iman? And that is actually a lesson of our uh, selected course of study also. And I have, uh, you know, given that lesson in detail. But today, inshallah, in briefly we shall review. Now we begin with Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu la takunu kal ladheena kafaru wa qalu la ikhwanihim idha darabu fil ard aw kanu ghuzzan law kanu indana ma matu wa ma qatilu Oh you who believe or profess, profess to believe don't be like those who said about those brothers when those brothers they are journeying in the in the earth or they are on some battle or war they say about them, Law kanu indana mamatu. Had they been with us, had they not gone, had they not gone, gone out for journeying, or had they not gone out for the to the battlefield, they might not have been killed. Ya yulladina amanu la takunu You don't be like those people. Kalladina kafaru, who disbelieve actually. This is a disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa taala. Because as the, the we, see, we shall see in the later part of this ayah, life and death is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If the time has come, according to the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether you are in a fortress, you will die. And if the time has not come, if you are just, you know, uh, in the middle of the, 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 the battle, you will, you will return safe. No harm will come to you. So actually, whosoever says, had he been here, he would not have died. Had he been with us here, he would not have been killed. So actually, this shows that they don't believe that the life and death are in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are not subject to these conditions, the worldly conditions, the external conditions, the apparent conditions. They are actually in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He decides. Ya amanu la takunu. You don't be like those. Al-Kalkalazina Kafaru, who have disbelieved and who, have, who don't have faith. They have shown that they don't have faith. They are actually the Munafiqeen. They are in the background of this ayah also. And they said about their those brothers, Iza Zarabu Fillard, who were out in, on a journey in, the, in, the, in this earth. Or they went to some battlefield. Had they been with us, had they, be, had they remained with us, Mamatu, they would not have died, or Baba Kotelu, nor they would have been killed or slain. And this is why, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to make it an anguish in their hearts, so that they should have sighs and regrets, 
This is a pain in the heart. Allah, when a woman believes in Allah, whatever has happened is by his permission, by his leave. So actually, I, live, I give my whole matter to, in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever has come from him, 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 I accept it. So actually, but these people, because they don't have that iman, that it becomes an anguish. And now they are, they have regrets. Wallahu yuhi wa yumid. Now this is actually the essence of Iman. While actually the death and life is in the hands of Allah. It is Allah who gives life. And it is Allah himself who causes death. Wallahu bima ta'amaluna basir. And whatsoever you are doing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is seeing it. وَلَئِنْ قُتِلْتُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ عَوْمُتُّمْ And if you are slain or killed in the way of Allah, or you die, and die the natural death, what's, it, what's the difference? So long as you are in سَبِيلِ A person who is striving for the cause of Allah, who is continuously working hard for the cause of Allah, whether he is propagating his message or he is going to war. But the struggle, you know, was going on in the Makkah also, in the Makkah period. There was no war, but the, Muslim, the Sahaba were making jihad for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This jihad was not with sword, that jihad was with Quran. فَلَا تُطَعِ الْكَافِرِينَ وَدَاهِدْهُمْ بِهِ جِهَادًا كَبِيرًا Now, if they died the natural deaths, they were fi sabillah. And if they went out to some war or some battle, and there they were slain or killed, they were fi sabillah. So actually for Muslim, it doesn't make any difference whatsoever. So that is this ayah very important. وَلَئِنْ قُتِلْتُمْ فِي سَبِيلَ لَا يَوْمُتْتُمْ What's the difference between it? The death has to come either through some sword, sword of an enemy, or through some fever or some, some uh, other disease. So there's no difference for a moment. وَلَئِنْ قُتِلْتُمْ فِي سَبِيلَ So long as a moment is in the way of Allah, he is striving, he is discharging his duties of da'wa ilal khair, wa'amru bil ma'roof, wa nahiyan al munkar. He is doing his duty. Whether he is slain, or he dies, la maqfiratun min Allah wa rahmatun khairun min ma yajma'oor. The, the forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His mercy, they are much, with which they are bound to get. They are sure to get the maqfirah because he was a fisa bin Allah. Whether he died on the bed or he died in the field, it doesn't make any difference for him. So long as he was in the way of Allah, he was striving for the cause of Allah, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely give him the maqfirah, he will forgive him. And you know his mercy will cover him. Khairum mimma yajma'oon or they are much precious than what they are amassing. They are gathering around them, you know. These worldly things, the precious things. This, this death, this mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his forgiveness, that is much more valuable than that. Walain muttum, you know, you must be remembering that Hazrat Khalid ibn Walid radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he fought so many battles. So many battles, but he died on the bed. He was not killed in any, 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 any battle. He died on the bed. So what's the difference? So actually, the difference is whether you are striving for the cause of Allah, or you are spending all your energies, all your time, all your capabilities to gather these worldly things, and you know these possessions, worldly possessions, and money and wealth and all those. That is that makes the whole difference. Walain muttum aw kutultum la ilallah to sharun. Again, there's no difference. Whether you are slain or killed, or you die, you will be gathered towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So again, there's no difference. You have to go anyhow to your Lord and you have to face that accountability. For Bima Rahmatim bin Allah, this ayah is very important, very profound regarding, you know. The leadership of an Islamic party. What should be the qualities of the leader? And you know, we have the example before us is Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Laqad kada hasana. What was the qualities of the leadership of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? And any leader of any Islamic party, if it is really Islamic, should try his best to imitate and follow in the footsteps of of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Because we have read in this very surah the ayah. قُلْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهَ Tell them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if you love Allah, if you claim to love Allah, then you have to follow me. Then Allah will love you. So actually the same thing here, that every leader 
whether he is a big leader or a small leader. You know, if there is a group of small certain people, there is a leader. And in a very big party, there is the, the overall leader. Then, you know, there are the leaders, local leaders. Local chapters have leaders. And so, so on. This goes on. This is in the sort of a branching. But what are the qualities of a good Islamic leader? فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُ And it was by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is very, you are very lenient for your fellows, Muslims. So there should be leniency, not harshness. Every comrade or companion should feel that my leader, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, loves me. He holds me in high esteem. So that is the feeling that the leader should give to each one of the, the followers or the companions. فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ It's actually out of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has, you know, fashioned your personality in that way. He has given you that attitude of, of inner attitude that you are very lenient with your companions, with your comrades at arm. You are very you are lenient. وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضْوًا غَلِيزَ الْقَلْبِ Had you been rude and harsh-hearted, لَنْ فَضْوُ مِنْ حَوْلِكُ They would have dispersed from around you. Because actually what keeps people together is the bond of love. If you were, had you been rude, فَضْوًا غَلِيزَ الْقَلْبِ Harsh of head, harsh of heart, harsh-hearted or hard-hearted, they would have dispersed from around you. Far for anhum. Now you must do three things. Far for anhum. Keep them for keep, keep forgiving them. Mistakes will be committed by your companions. It's, it's human to err. There will be errors. There will be mistakes. So you keep on forgiving them. Far for anhum. Mustaghfir lahum. Not only that, you should keep on forgiving them. You should keep on asking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His forgiveness for them. He should also forgive. Number three, وَشَعْوِرْهُمْ فِي الْعَمْرِ And you include them in your consultations. That increases these, the, the confidence, mutual confidence. Our leader, whenever he has to decide something, he, he consults us. He asks us our opinion. He respects our opinion. So actually these three things, every leader, every Muslim leader should try to confirm as much as he can to follow the, in the first steps of the Prophet ﷺ. And these are the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Prophet himself. So what to say of anybody else? When these commandments are given to Muhammad ﷺ, who was under the direct guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then every other leader, you know, is not Nabi, he is not under the direct, you know, continuous guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coming. So he should be more careful in these aspects. فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيزَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّوا بِالْحَوْلِكِ فَعْفُ عَنْهُمْ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ وَشَعْبِرْهُمْ فِي الْعَمْرِ فَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ فَتَوَكَّلَ اللَّهِ And when you have made a decision, this is عَزَمْتَ, the decision lies with the leader. It will never be taken by counting the votes. There are hundred people, so if the fifty-one have this opinion, this is decided. No. This is Western democracy. This is not Islamic consultation. This is not the Islamic mushabra. Not, so, not at all. Because here it is not faiza azam tum. No, it's not the plural. Faiza azam ta. When you have taken a decision, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa after consultation, then the decision rests with the leader. It rested with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa He was the leader at that time. He was the you know, commander of the army at Badr and Ohod. So he had many uh, positions. He was Nabi, Prophet, he was Messenger, Rasul, then he was the head of the state. If we say that Medina was a city-state, who was the head of the state? Muhammad ﷺ. He was the chief of the army. Who was the commander of the army? So actually, he, who was the Imam of the Masjid al-Nabawi? So he was the Imam also. So he had so many positions. So in every position he has some rights, some duties, some obligations. So here actually, it's very important for his azamta. You do make consultations so that there is a mutual confidence is being built, you know, between you and your, your followers and companions. But then the decision will remain with you. And then 
have confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You should have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Allah yuhibbul mutawakkileen. Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who have, who put their trust in Him, exclusively in Him. That is actually something very necessary for a moment to do. In yansurkum Allah fala ghaliba lakum. O Muslims, if Allah helps you, nobody can overcome you. Nobody can defeat you if Allah is on your side. If you have the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, can anybody defeat you? Nobody can defeat you. Why yakhzulkum? And if he forsakes you, فَمَنْزَلْ لَذِي يَنْصُرَكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ Then who is that? Who are they who can help you after that? Nobody would help. Will the angels help? Against the decision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or the people can help? No. You can't get any help. So you must seek the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be sincere to Him. Hundred percent devote yourself to Him to seek His pleasure. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you. And because it's going to be a two-sided phenomenon, not one-sided phenomenon. If you help Allah, Allah will help you. In tansurullah yansurkum wa yusabbi taqdamakum. You have to help Allah. What does it mean to help Allah's deen? To devote yourself to make the deen of Allah supreme. That is the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ayyuhu ladhina amanu kulu ansar Allah. You become the helpers of Allah. What does it mean? Help the deen of Allah. May try to make it supreme. With your bodies and with your lives and with your belongings, everything. Devote for that. So if you are helping Allah, will not Allah help you? In tansuruk, in yansurkum Allah, in yansuk, and there, here it is, if Allah helps you, now who but he can, whosoever can, who can defeat you? And if he forsakes you, then who is there? to help you after it. وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكِّلُ الْمُتَوَكِّلُونَ And you know, people, وَيَتَوَكِّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Those who are real believers, they should have all their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They should trust Him, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forsake them if you are sincere with Him. مَا كَعْمَ لِنَبِيٍ أَنْ يَغُلْ This is, you know, a very important ayah because the munafiqeen went to this extent that they blamed Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of some dishonesty. That out of some, there are, you know, that traditions, that something has been stolen by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam out of this, that booty. So they were so much, you know, they had all that courage to say it so. وَمَا كَانَ الْنَبِيَ يَغُلْ It cannot be possible for any prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he can be dishonest, he can betray his trust. Impossible. مَا كَانَ النَّبِيِّنَ يَغُلْ وَمَنْ يَغْلُ الْيَاتِ بِمَا غَلَّ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ And now this is the rule of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whosoever is dishonest, betrays his trust. He will bring with whatever he had betrayed the trust. If he had stolen something, he will come on the day of judgment with that very thing, you know, within his hands, so that his crime or his dishonesty is made public before all of the humanity, that he betrayed his trust in this thing. And he, you know, this was proved to be dishonest regarding this thing. Whosoever does it. وَمَنْ يَغْلُوا الْيَاتِ بِمَا غَلَّ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ ثُمَّ تُوَفَّى كُلُّ نَفْسٍ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ And then every soul will be given full reward and full recompense of what he had done, or what he had earned. وَهُمْ لَا يُسْلَمُونَ And they shall not be wronged. Nobody will be deprived of the results of his deeds. أَفَمَنِ اتَّبَعَ رِزْوَانَ اللَّهِ كَمَنْ بَابِ سَخَطِ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَمَا بَعُ جَهَنَّ وَبِيسَ الْمَسِيرِ So whosoever seeks and follows the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, can he be equal to or similar to a person who is buying the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is incurring on himself the wrath, wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they are وَمَا بَعُ جَهَنَّمْ And you know, their places, their abode is going to be hell, the fire of hell. Babes al Masir, and it is a very evil destination, a very bad place to return. So these are the two characters. One is devoting himself to get the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The other one is doing, the, his attitude in life is to incur the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Can they be equal? 
ہوم در جات ان اللہ دے ہیو ڈائیورس رینکس ڈائیورس رینکس ون از گوئنگ ٹوڈس دس دی ادر ون از گوئنگ ٹوڈس دیٹ دین دے ہیو دی گریڈس امنگ دی مومنس دیر آر یو نو گریڈس ابو بکر صدیق رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ سٹس آن دی ٹاپ عمر ابن الخطاب عثمان رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ دین حضرت علی رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ دین اصحاب دی ریسٹ آف دی سکس from the Ashara Mubashara, then you know the people who attended Badr, and so on. So there are Tarajat. Even the Munafiqeen, all were not equal Munafiqeen. Even Kuffar, they were all not equal Kuffar. So there, there were greats. Whom Tarajatun in the Allah. So there are first the distribution. You know, diverse. One is going towards the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Other is incurring the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Among all these, then there are greats. ہوم درجات الند اللہ اللہ بصیر میں مایا ملور این اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی از سینگ از واچنگ واٹ دے آر ڈوئنگ لقد من اللہ علی المومنین از با صفیم رسول ناؤ دس آیا یو شوڈ سے دیٹ وی فاؤنڈ ان دی آیا سورت البقرہ دیٹ از ٹوائس ایز بگ ایز دس سورہ سورت و عالی عمران اٹ ہیز ٹوئنٹی سیکشن سورت البقرہ ایز فورٹی سیکشن We found this subject discussed in Surah Al-Baqarah two places. What are the four main basic functions of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? How did he gather people around him? How he called people towards the way of Allah? How he purified his, their souls? How he trained them and educated them? So first of all, in the prayer of Ibrahim and Ismail, we read in the 15th section of Surah Al-Baqarah, ربنا وبعث فيهم رسولا منهم يتلو عليهم آياته ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة ويزكيهم Then in the 18th section we read كما أرسلنا فيكم رسولا منكم يتلو عليكم آياتنا ويزكيكم ويعلمكم الكتاب والحكمة Twice in Surah Al-Baqra Now you find the same subject here in Surah Al-Imran لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done a very big favor to the moments, to the, to the faithful, to the believers. Is بَعْسَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ When He raised in them a messenger from among themselves. He didn't send him them, for them a messenger from outside. If the messenger would have been Iranian, you know, The, the, the Arabs would have felt difficulty in understanding what message he has brought. Then you know, nationalities, the barriers are there. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the greatest favor to these people that he raised his last messenger, the greatest messenger, the final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From among them is ba'asa fihim rasulam min anfusihim, from among themselves. And what, what he does? Again, the same four functions. Yatlu alayhim ayatihi. He reads out to them his ayat. That is the way of da'wah. Da'wah through Quran. Call people towards Allah and Allah's way through Quran. By Quran. Number two. Yatlu alayhim ayatihi wa yuzakkihi. And purifies their souls. This purification of their souls is also through Quran. We shall read in Surah Yunus. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رُسْلٍ قَدْ جَعَتْكُمْ مَعِذَةٌ مِّنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَشِفَاءٌ لِمَا فِي الصُّدُورِ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ قَدْ جَعَتْكُمْ مَعِذَةٌ مِّنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَشِفَاءٌ لِمَا فِي الصُّدُورِ Oh people, it, the, the sermon and the good advice and I also the remedy of all the diseases of the heart, of the soul, they have come to you in the form of this Qur'an. So actually purification of the souls is also through Qur'an. وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ And he teaches them the law, the book, and the wisdom. The wisdom underlying this law. The wisdom underlying this sharia. There are two things. Ahkam. Do this. Don't do this. Then there is the wisdom underlying these ahkam. Why not to do it? If you are not doing it, what benefit comes to you? And if you do it, what harm will come to you? For the things which are forbidden. And things which have been given, which have been commanded, what's benefit for you in it? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't stand to gain anything from your observing the sharia. It's for you, for your benefit, for your welfare. 
So this, these are the four functions, basic functions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِسْبَعَسَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنَ الْفُسِهِمْ يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَإِنْ كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ لَفِي ظَلَالٌ مُبِينٌ And surely before this, they were definitely in the in manifest error, in mistake. They had gone astray. They, did, they didn't have the right path. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done them a very big favor when he sent Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he raised him from among themselves. أَوَلَمَّا أَصَابَتْكُمْ مُسِيبَةٌ قَدْ أَصَدْتُمْ مِسْلَيْهَا قُلْتُمْ أَنَّا هَذَا قُلْ هُوَ مِنْ عِنْدِ أَنفُسِكُمْ What? If some disaster has befell you because seventy of the sahaba, they were martyred. And many others were, you know, injured in the battle of Uhud. If a disaster befell you at Uhud, that it means at Uhud, because this is all description of the events and the, you know, a commentary on the events of Uhud. And you had inflicted your enemy twice that the that that you'd wound, because at Badr, you know, seventy were killed. Another seventy were taken captives. So it, it amounted to double. Here seventy Muslims were martyred. Nobody was captive. Nobody could be taken captive by the kuffar or mushrikeen. But there at Badr, you had killed seventy of them. And another seventy you had taken as prisoners and captives. So actually you had in, inflicted on them, on your enemy, twice the infliction that has come to you. So what if you have been inflicted? If you have been given this injury, of twice of which you have already given to your enemy, but you come to stay, Kultum Anna Haza, you have started saying, Where from has it come? Where from has it come? Is not Allah on our side? If He is on our side, how come? How this disaster? How this conflict, this infliction? So that is the question that was bothering many of the people. Then you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers, Qul huwa min indi anfusikum. Tell them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it has come from your own selves. The detail has already come. Laqad sadaqakum allahu wa'adahu. Allah had fulfilled His promise to you. Istahussunahum bi izni. When you were killing them, like anything, hatta idha fashiltum wa tanaza'atum fil amr. But when... You, you, you are loosened, you, are, you loosened your discipline, discipline. and you quarreled about the matter. And your leader was saying, don't move from here, and you move from there. But I say to him, and you disobeyed the leader, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave, gave you this punishment. But it is from you, not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kultum anna hada. You are saying, from where has it come? Why should it come, come to us? But we are the people who believe in Allah, and Allah is with us. Qul, tell them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who are in It is actually the result of your own misdeed, your own error, your own mistake, your own um, commitment. Inna Allah ala kulli shayin qadir, verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has all the power. He could have condoned your mistake, but he didn't. Because there was a wisdom. He wanted to teach you a lesson. He wanted to differentiate between the true believers and the munafiqeen. If there is no test, no hardships are coming, all will be equally mu'minin. It's actually the tests, the tribulations, which, which will divide and differentiate that he is someone who has real belief and he is someone who professes to believe but he is not, not actually believer. He doesn't have the real faith. That will come, you know, in the next ayah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we are all powerful. We could have condoned. Nothing would have come to you. We, can, we could do it. But we didn't do it. And that was our decision. Why? The wisdom is coming in the next ayat. وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ يَوْمَ الْتَقَلْ جَمْعَانِ فَبِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ Again, you know, repeating of the same thing. Whatever came, befell you, came on you and befell you, on that day on which the two armies confronted each, each other, that was by the leave of Allah, by the izun of Allah, by the permission of Allah, 
Nothing happened without his permission. It couldn't have happened at all without his permission. No leaf of a, of a tree can move without his permission. So how could 70 Muslims be martyred without the leave of Allah, without the permission of Allah? وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ يَمَلْ تَقَلْ جَمْعَانِ فَبِيسْنِ اللَّهِ Why? وَلَيَعْلَمَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And this was so. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to make manifest who are the real Muslims. Who stood fast? Who are they who even after infliction of this wound, they remained faithful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they remained faithful to his, his messenger and his uh, apostle Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He wanted to make it manifest. And when the Muslims became manifest, now it was also clearly seen by people who were the munafiqeen. Now this is the division that has taken place. وَقِيلَ لَهُمْ تَعَالَوْ قَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِلِ اللَّهِ Now this I think, you know, it, it relates to the incident which happened in the very beginning. When Abdullah ibn Ubay and 300 of his men, they left the place of battle, went back to Medina. I think, as far as I can guess, this ayah relates to that incident. وَقِيلَ لَهُمْ تَعَالَوْ قَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِلِ اللَّهِ Definitely when it was said to them, come on, Go to fight for the cause of Allah. Where are you going? Definitely, the Muslims, you know, the 700 Muslims, which remained with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they would have said to them, where are you going? You profess to believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and you are leaving him here. How? How come? Where are you going? Ta'alao. Ta'atil ufi sabili. Abid fa'u. Come. Join these ranks. And fight for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if not for the cause of Allah, we have to defend Medina. Where are you going? The army has come. Three thousand of them are there. If you know there is a defeat here in the, this field, will not the army go and enter Medina and plunder and loot and kill and, and, and burn? Whatever happens, you know, after the defeat. So these are two things here. Ta'ala qatilu fi sabirullah fa'u. Come, where are you going? Come, fight for the cause of Allah. And if not for the cause of Allah, for your own cause, for defending Medina, Abid Fa'u, we have to defend. They said, we don't think that there's going to be any war, any, any battle. What does it mean? It so happens for some, sometimes that apparently two groups are fighting with each other, with each other but they have some behind the scene treaty with each other. They want to only show to the people that we are quarreling. They are not quarreling definitely. So that was their idea which they gave to the people. We don't think there is going to be war. They couldn't say anything else. Showing their backs to the battlefield. What else could they say? Well, no, we don't think there is going to be any war, real war. Now, if we, if we had really known that there is going to be a war, there is going to be a battle, we must have followed you. Hum lil kufre yawmayzin aqrabu min hum lil iman. On that day, they were nearer to kufr than to iman. A munafiq actually keeps on oscillating. La ilaha ulai wa la ilaha ulai. Muzab zabin abayna zalik. Sometimes he is with the Muslims, Mumins. Sometimes he is with the enemies. So munafiqin, you know, two-faced person, double-faced person. He makes friendship with Mumineen also. Maybe that they are victorious, so we must have, you know, good relations with them. But we can't, you know, sever our ties with the kuffar also. If they, they have the upper hand, then, you know, we, we must keep good offices with them also. So they are munafiqeen, they keep on oscillating. La ilaha ulai wa la ilaha ulai muzab zabina bayna zalik. They are not decisively on any side. Neither with the side of the kuffar, nor with the side of the Muslims, oscillating between them. Now on that day Allah says, this, this oscillation, you know, in this process of oscillation, they were nearer to kufr than to iman. They are saying with their mouths which is not there in their hearts. They have something else in their hearts, and they are saying something else with their tongues and mouths. Wallahu a'lam bima yaktamoon. Allah very well knows what they are hiding and what they are concealing in their hearts. Alladheena qalu la ikhwanihim wa qadu la wa ta'awna ma qutilu. Again the same thing. 
those who are saying about their brothers, and they, they themselves had withheld from the war. Either they didn't even come out of Medina at all, the Munafiqeen, or they returned back and they sat in Medina, waiting for the result of the, of the battle, what happens, which way the winds blow. Alladina Kalul Ikhwani, but some of their brothers, some of their people, from their own tribes, their own families, they were the Muslims, Mu'minin, they went into the battle, and some of them were martyred and killed and slain. So they said about them, Alladina Kalul Ikhwani, Him Wakadu, Lawa Tauna Ma Kotilu. Had they obeyed us, had they remained here at Medina, not joined Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or had they come back with us from the, the battle, then you know they, might, they would not have been slain or killed. Qul fadra'u an anfusikum al Say to them, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so you avert that from your own selves if you can, if you in kuntum sadiqeen, if you are truthful, if you are, whatever you are saying is true. Even here in Medina, you might be killed. Even here at Medina, you might be, you know, you might die. You may be some roof, you know, comes on, on your heads and you die. Maybe there's some fever and you die. So if they were with us, they would not have been killed. If that is the case, then it means that you have the, this matter of life and death in your own hands. You can control your death. You can, you can save yourself from death. You can, can't do it. وَلَا تَحْتَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتَ Again, please note, the ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah. وَلَا تَقُولُوا لِمَنْ يُقْتَلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتَ بَلْ أَحْيَاهُ وَلَا كِلَّا تَشْعُرُونَ Here you have this, this, the very, this very subject in a more, you know, forceful manner. وَلَا تَحْتَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتَ Never think about those who have been killed or slain in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they are dead. بَلَحْيَاؤُنْ No. They are living. They are alive. In the رَبِّهِمْ يُرْزَقُونَ They are with their Lord and they are, they are having their sustenance and provision from Him. فَرِحِينَ بِمَا عَطَاهُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ And they are very, very happy. They are rejoicing with whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them out of His bounty. وَيَسْتَبْشِرُونَ بِالَّذِينَ لَمْ يَحْلَقُوا بِهِمْ And they are happy for the sake of those مُؤْمِنِينَ صَادِقِينَ True believers who have not joined them up till now. لَمْ يَلْحَقُوا بِهِمْ مِنْ خَلْتِهِمْ They are there, they are awaiting their time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept them also as martyrs. They are waiting for them. The day if they also come, Allah خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَهُمْ يَعْسَنُونَ There will be no fear upon them and they, you will, they will let, not have to grieve any, any more in any case. So this, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this. So maybe our brothers, they are waiting for that. We will find in Surah Al-Azab, you know, the same words. فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ قَضَى نَحْبَهُ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَنْتَظِرُ There are from among these moments who have, you know, given their lives and who have fulfilled their covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the, there are the others who are waiting for their time, for their, for their chance to come. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَنْتَظِرُ And they are waiting for the same thing. فَرِحِينَ بِمَا عَطَاهُمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ وَيَسْتَبْشِرُونَ بِالَّذِينَ لَمْ يَلْحَقُوا بِهِمْ مِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ اللَّهُ خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَهُمْ يَعْزَلُونَ يَسْتَبْشِرُونَ بِنِعْمَةِ مِنِ اللَّهِ فَضْلٌ They are rejoicing with the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His bounties. وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُضِيُوا عَجْرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't waste the, the reward of those who are true